peace to my brother who is one with me. A Course in Miracles suggests that we suffer from a case of mistaken identity. We have forgotten our true self, which is said to be limitless, transcendent, and eternal. Instead, we regard ourselves as an ego or separate self, limited to the body, fragile, ephemeral, and vulnerable. We therefore feel fearful and defensive and regard the fleeting pleasures of the world as our only source of satisfaction. Although all the great religious traditions help us recognize our true self, the Course is unique in emphasizing relationships as the major means for this recognition. As we see and treat others, so do we see and treat ourselves. By recognizing the true self in others, we also find it in ourselves. The Errors of Ego What is the ego but a dream of what you really are? The ego is the mind's belief that it is completely on its own. Who asks you to define the ego and explain how it arose can be but he who thinks it real and seeks by definition to ensure that its elusive nature is concealed behind the words that seem to make it so. Errors are of the ego and correction of errors lies in the relinquishment of the ego. Every response to the ego is a call to war, and war does deprive you of peace. Yet in this war, there is no opponent. Peace is the ego's greatest enemy because according to its interpretation of reality, war is the guarantee of its survival. The ego becomes strong in strife. Even the wished for can become unwelcome. That must be so because the ego cannot be at peace. When you are anxious, realize that anxiety comes from the capriciousness of the ego. And no, this need not be. You can be as vigilant against the ego's dictates as for them. You are one self. You are one self, complete and healed and whole, with power to lift the veil of darkness from the world. You are only love, but when you deny this, you make what you are something you must learn to remember. You need to learn to lay all fear aside and know yourself as love which has no opposite in you. Fear not to look upon the lovely truth in you. Yourself is still in peace, even though your mind is in conflict. Nothing outside yourself can save you. Nothing outside yourself can give you peace. You will yet learn that peace is part of you and requires only that you be there to embrace any situation in which you are. And finally, you will learn that there is no limit to where you are so that your peace is everywhere as you are. Limit the peace you share, and yourself must be unknown to you. What we accept as what we are proclaims what everyone must be along with us. Fail not your brothers, or you fail yourself. Look lovingly on them, that they may know that they are part of you and you of them. Knowing your brother. In learning to escape from illusions, your debt to your brother is something you must never forget. Reason sees a holy relationship as what it is, a common state of mind where both give errors gladly to correction, that both may happily be healed as one. Whenever you are with a brother, you are learning what you are because you are teaching what you are. He will respond either with pain or with joy depending on which teacher you are following. He will be imprisoned or released according to your decision, and so will you. Never forget your responsibility to him, because it is your responsibility to yourself. Look gently on your brother, and behold the world in which perception of your hate 
has been transformed into a world of love. We begin the journey back by setting out together and gather in our brothers as we continue together. Every gain in our strength is offered for all so they too can lay aside their weakness and add their strength to us. How can you find the way except by taking your brother with you? Everyone is looking for himself and for the power and glory he thinks he has lost. Whenever you are with anyone, you have another opportunity to find them. What you acknowledge in your brother, you are acknowledging in yourself, and what you share, you strengthen. It will be given you to see your brother's worth when all you want for him is peace, and what you want for him, you will receive. Look once again upon your brother, not without the understanding that he is the way to heaven or hell as you perceive him. But forget not this. The role you give to him is given you, and you will walk the way you pointed out to him, because it is your judgment on yourself. You who are the same will not decide alone or differently. Either you give each other life or death. Either you are each other's savior or his judge. Through your gratitude, you come to know your brother, and one moment of real recognition makes everyone your brother. Know your brother as yourself. Answer his call for love, and yours is answered. To know your brother is to know God. Each little gift you offer to your brother lights up the world. Nothing is asked of you but to accept the changeless and eternal that abide in him, for your identity is there. The peace in you can but be found in him, and every thought of love you offer him but brings you nearer to your wakening to peace eternal and to endless joy. When you have seen your brothers as yourself, you will be released. The quiet that surrounds you dwells in him, and from this quiet come the happy dreams in which your hands are joined in innocence. These are not hands that grasp in dreams of pain. They hold no sword, for they have left their hold on every vain illusion of this world. And being empty, they receive instead a brother's hand in which completion lies. This brother neither leads nor follows us, but walks beside us on the selfsame road. He is like us as near or far away from what we want as we will let him be. We make no gains he does not make with us, and we fall back if he does not advance. Take not his hand in anger, but in love, for in his progress do you count your own. Have faith in him who walks with you, so that your fearful concept of yourself may change. Choose once again what you would have him be, remembering that every choice you make establishes your own identity as you will see it and believe it is. When you have become willing to hide nothing, you will not only be willing to enter into communion, but will also understand peace and joy. From the oneness that we have attained, we call to all our brothers, asking them to share our peace and consummate our joy. Let us celebrate our release together by releasing everyone with us. Let us unite in bringing blessing to the world. Our function is to work together, because apart from each other we cannot function at all. The whole power of God's Son lies in all of us, but not in any of us alone. It is through us that peace will come. The Course maintains that we are the essential instruments of peace for the world and that our own thoughts and actions determine how deeply peace is experienced and how widely it is shared. We become the means of peace when we are willing to learn, to teach, to give, and especially to forgive. The Course is unique among spiritual paths in its emphasis on the importance of forgiveness for healing relationships. 
forgiveness of both ourselves and others is said to be crucial for removing fear, anger, and all the other obstacles that distort our relationships. To let forgiveness rest upon all things. Where could your peace arise but from forgiveness? Forgiveness removes only the untrue, lifting the shadows from the world and carrying it safe and sure within its gentleness to the bright world of new and clean perception. There is your purpose now, and it is there that peace awaits you. Look upon the world with forgiving eyes, for forgiveness literally transforms vision and lets you see the real world reaching quietly and gently across chaos, removing all illusions that had twisted your perception and fixed it on the past. To forgive is merely to remember only the loving thoughts you gave in the past and those that were given you. All the rest must be forgotten. All that must be forgiven are the illusions you have held against your brother. Withhold forgiveness from your brother and you attack him. You give him nothing and receive of him but what you gave. Those you do not forgive, you fear. Forgiveness cannot be withheld a little, nor is it possible to attack for this and love for that and understand forgiveness. Whom you forgive is free, and what you give you share. Forgive the sins your brother thinks he has committed and all the guilt you think you see in him. Forgiveness takes away what stands between your brother and yourself. It is the wish that you be joined with him and not apart. Who forgives is healed, and in his healing lies the proof that he has truly pardoned and retains no trace of condemnation that he still would hold against himself or any living thing. Make way for love which you did not create, but which you can extend. On earth, this means forgive your brother, that the darkness may be lifted from your mind. How willing are you to forgive your brother? How much do you desire peace instead of endless strife and misery and pain? These questions are the same in different form. Forgiveness is your peace, for herein lies the end of separation and the dream of danger and destruction. If you can see your brother merits pardon, you have learned forgiveness is your right as much as his. You are merely asked to see forgiveness as the natural reaction to distress that rests on error and thus calls for help. Forgiveness is the only sane response. Without forgiveness is the mind in chains believing in its own futility. Yet with forgiveness does the light shine through the dream of darkness. The unforgiving mind is full of fear and offers love no room to be itself, no place where it can spread its wings in peace and soar above the turmoil of the world. The unforgiving mind is sad, without the hope of respite and release from pain. It suffers and abides in misery, peering about in darkness, seeing not, yet certain of the danger lurking there. An unforgiving thought is one which makes a judgment that it will not raise to doubt, although it is not true. The mind is closed and will not be released. The thought protects projection, tightening its chains, so that distortions are more veiled and more obscure, less easily accessible to doubt and further kept from reason. An unforgiving thought does many things. In frantic action it pursues its goal, twisting and overturning what it sees as interfering with its chosen path. Distortion is its purpose and the means by which it would accomplish it as well. It sets about its furious attempts to smash reality without concern for anything that would appear to pose a contradiction to its point of view. Forgiveness, on the other hand, is still and quietly does nothing. It offends no aspect of reality, nor seeks to twist it to appearances it likes. It merely looks and waits and judges not. There can be no form of suffering that fails to hide an unforgiving thought, nor can there be a form of pain forgiveness cannot heal. Forgiveness paints a picture of a world where suffering is over 
loss becomes impossible and anger makes no sense. Attack is gone and madness has an end. Fear condemns and love forgives. Forgiveness thus undoes what fear has produced. Today we practice true forgiveness, that the time of joining be no more delayed. Thank you.